Good morning and welcome back to Kirkstone Botanica. Just a very quick overview today of um, the small aloe collection. Uh, I've been interested in aloes for a long, long time now, certainly over 30 years. So I just thought we'd have a, a look through some of the newer additions uh, to the aloe family here at Kirkstone. So we've got the smallest aloe that I personally know of. If anybody does know of a smaller species and please do tell me. This is Aloe Hawarthioides, named obviously because it resembles a Hawarthia, which it does. Very very small plant with leaves about an inch long and clustering freely. So it makes a lovely disorganized mound very very quickly. Now you can just see there's a new flower spike just forming on one side and some younger plants, whether you call them daughters as I prefer to, or I know in America they sometimes call them pups. So there is Alohawarthioides. Now behind there, keeping company, we have a very quickly recovering aloe hybrid, so an American hybrid called Cleopatra, which we've had in the greenhouse now for about two weeks and is recovering fantastically from its transatlantic flight. So you can see those wonderful pinky red edgings, those teeth on the side of the leaf and those spots which are not only white as you might find in aloe verigato, aloe zebrina but are actually centered sometimes with pink so like a white varicose finish to the epidermis but with a pink center almost as if Cleopatra is wearing makeup and then the species aloe, lovely chestnut brown spines on this gorgeous aloe brumii. So quite an unusual shade of green for an aloe, almost an olive green, but with these wonderful brown spines on the edge. Behind that we have another fabulous new American hybrid. This is aloe Christmas sleigh. So Christmas sleigh has really the most vivid reddy orange, vermilion is probably a better word, spines, absolutely covering the edges of the leaves so they look like dangerously fanged mouths and next to that a wonderful species aloe which is also clumping very nicely and this is aloe alfonsina and this really is a beautiful plant it's got brownish green edgings to the leaves a rich lime green uh, epidermis going around the plant but with those lovely squat thick succulent leaves and as you can see also uh, branching sideways very nicely we have four or five daughter offsets then another smaller aloe which is uh, belied by its name so this is aloe humilis one of the smaller growing aloes and a very distinctive bluey green color so aloe humilis has got much more erect leaves than some of the other plants and behind aloe humilis we have another new hybrid which has just arrived this is a hybrid called Franco so it hasn't quite recovered yet a bit of a, a strange looking plant because it has this tendency for the leaf edges to actually roll together now, I don't know if you can see on that back leaf there but it actually is almost forming a complete tube almost like a Sansevieria as the leaves close up into a tube then another uh, natural hybrid now this is a hybrid between aloe rauhii, which is one of the um, plants which has been used in the parentage program of lots of these new aloes because of its small size and distinctive colour. And named of course for that bromeliad and cactus and succulent expert of earlier years, Werner Rau. So aloe rauhii, this is hybridised with a larger, stronger growing species Aloe somaliensis from Somalia. Now that can be a plant which can be quite uh, sensitive on its own roots um, and certainly in our uh, considerably unwarm climes here in the northeast of the UK, Ra somaliensis is quite a difficult plant to grow at our temperatures. But the hybrid is much more 
um, robust. And similarly, although it is not a descendant of Somaliensis, this is the hybrid Allosomalens. Somalens. Very distinctive because of the large amounts of white in the leaves. Now behind Somalens we have another species aloe. This is aloe bakery or bakerii. Uh, a longer leafed form, the leaves up to about five and a half to six inches. The majority around about four inches to five. But this is aloe bakery. Now as a plant here, which is um, very controversial I think, as many people try to buy aloe squarosa. And aloe squarosa is actually quite a rare plant, uh, but we will show you it in a minute and there will be a separate video discussing the aloe uh, squarosa, aloe juvena controversy. So this more erect form here, forming a five column, uh, five pentamerous leaf formation column, so the leaves are in five rows looking down on the plant like a star or a starfish. This is definitely aloe juvena. And if you look at the ends of the leaves, they're more or less concave. The, the whole structure of the leaf curves inwards towards the plant. Now we'll show you aloe squarosa in a minute. And as you can see, the distinguishing finger is a slightly different shade of green. But with aloe squarosa, the leaves curl outwards. Now this is another attempt to buy aloe squarosa. And it was yet another aloe juvena that arrived. Now this very large plant behind, very peculiar plant, is actually not an aloe, but it looks like an aloe, it's the size of an aloe, but it is in fact Haworthia pentagona, um, looking amazingly like aloe brevifolia, but this is definitely Haworthia pentagona, the five-tiered Haworthia. Uh, it's in this section because it has similar uh, cultural requirements and also because it fits. In terms of visual appeal, it looks as if it fits in this collection. Another uh, fantastic aloe hybrid. This is aloe cosmo. Very dark, strong, thick leaves and very wide. The leaves up to about two and a half, three inches wide at the base and with these fantastic pearly white tubercles or raised spots all over the surface of the plant. Absolutely gorgeous plant. Then an old favourite, probably seen on an awful lot of windowsills, certainly in, in our country. This is Aloe variegata, a very common plant, but still one of my favourites. Strongly marked, lovely white spots, dark green centre, easy to look after and quite frost hardy down to about almost freezing temperature. Now the leaves very distinctly arranged in three rows. Um, the partridge-breasted aloe, funny name, really is still one of my favourites. Now behind that plant, you can just see looking through now, clamouring for attention, is the plant I was talking about. Now as you can see, the leaves are recurved, so the leaves curl back towards the ground. And the leaves are also longer and a different shade of green. Now this is the genuine species aloe squarosa. Uh, as I did say earlier, there will be a video comparing these two plants and how aloe squarosa in cultivation is quite rare and aloe juvena is very common and aloe squarosa is often uh, misdescribed and when you order it, you'll find out it's aloe juvena that comes. Then another one of my favourites and I think lots of people's favourite aloe, this is aloe uh, melanocantha subspecies Erinacea. Now personally I would rather keep it as a separate species. It has quite a different morphology, a different structure completely to Aloe melanocantha. So it might look like a miniature relative but it's a different plant, different conditions, different growth habit and different coloration. Really is a gorgeous white plant. And unlike say a Dudleia or Graptopedalum or Escheveria the coloration is actually deep within the epidermis. It's not farinaceous, it's not a powder on the plant, it actually uh, is actually within the plant itself. Very strong blacky brown tips contrasting with that almost snowy white green skin. Aloe erinacea, beautiful beautiful plant. 
And finally another plant with its leaves in five rows. Now this is a new plant to me and we had a repotting video and it also featured in an unboxing. Now I'd seen photographs of this plant but when it came it was even more beautiful than I'd seen it. Now this is a hybrid between Gasteria, Gasteria maculata and Aloe variegata. And this is the hybrid Gasterallo Tika Zela. And of recent arrivals, it really is one of my favourite plants. Gorgeous, thick, wide leaves, very strongly spotted with white, lime green edging, teeth margins, leaves strongly arrayed in those five rows, so pentamerous structure, and that will be the last of these small aloes that we feature today. So Gasterallo, a hybrid between the genus Gasteria and the genus Allo, so an intergeneric hybrid between those two. So I'll just zoom out and have a quick look at the 30 or so small aloes that are in the collection and of course over time we'll be adding more videos about the Allo collection to the Kirkstone Botanica site and as each new plant arrives, it will either feature in an unboxing or as part of a large order as one of our whole exposés. But it certainly we'll be talking about it. Individual pictures will appear on Instagram and Facebook. So if you're an allophile like me, then keep tuned. Please like, please follow and please subscribe. Bye for now and bye for the allo family. Bye bye everybody and happy growing.